Did you know that you could turn your device from this to this? Perhaps you're a big fan of your favorite game, and sometimes you might want to customize a nice environment outside of that game. So in this video, I'll be going over how I customize both my iPad and Android devices. If you're a Samsung user, stick around to the end as I have some extra special customizations that you should totally try out. The first thing I like to do is, I usually like to get rid of basically everything on my home screen. I like starting on an empty slate where I can envision where I want my icons and widgets to be. I also appreciate the cleanliness, especially if you have a nice image to use as your wallpaper. Moving over to my other devices, you can see that they either have very little icons or no icons at all, so this setup won't be any different. Now that we have an empty slate, let's find a wallpaper. I typically have a criteria for wallpapers, for example, if I have a tablet and the home screen rotates, I like to find a wallpaper where the main subject is centered. This way, when you rotate it, your subject will still be in frame. You should also aim to find a wallpaper that has a high resolution. This way, your wallpaper won't look fuzzy and pixelated. With that out of the way, there are a couple sources that you can check out for wallpapers. You can probably search up your favorite characters on Google and find some pretty good images that way. If you are a huge fan of Project Sekai and have a favorite character, you can also find your favorite card and set that as your wallpaper. You can either find that card in the game, enlarge it and take a screenshot, or search for that card in the Sekai.best website. If you want to pick something from another game, there are usually database or wiki websites that contain artwork for cards, so you can also search for those as well. These database websites generally contain card art in the highest quality. With your wallpaper set, let's check out your icons and widgets. With the introduction of iOS 18, you can now finally move your icons wherever you want, and also apply a colored tint to them. I won't lie, after playing around with these two settings, I realized they aren't really what I thought they would be. The ability to move icons is still quite restrictive as the icons don't stay in place when I try to move them. Additionally, the colored tint does not look all that impressive. If you intend on trying out these tinted icons and widgets, I would highly recommend picking a darker wallpaper, as it helps make the icons stand out a little better. If you have Android 12 and above, you can also have the ability to theme some icons based on the color scheme of your wallpaper. Note that not all icons are themed, so I usually like to create a folder where I put all my unthemed icons. This color scheme applies system-wide, meaning it can also apply to your keyboard, applications, system functions, and more. If you want further control of your icons, you can create custom app icons. You can download an app on the iOS App Store to theme your icons, but it's a lot better if you have the time to make custom icons yourself through Siri shortcuts. To do that, you want to create a shortcut in the app, apply an image, and add it to the home screen. On Android, you can use a custom launcher to make custom icons, and if you have a Samsung device, you can download theme part from the Galaxy Store and create custom icons that way. Some older Android devices might not let you use custom icon packs, so you can also download a custom launcher like Nova Launcher or Launch Air and apply it that way. Personally, I'm a big fan of Launch Air as it is not only free but also feels extremely modern. Custom launchers give a degree of customization that isn't possible on stock device home screens, so it's worth a shot if you want to take your customization to the next level. The purpose of my setup is to make it clean, but not so clean that it loses its function. On tablets, I like to keep the dock full of apps that I use on a regular basis. Then I create a second home screen page where I put my most frequently used apps and widgets. Some widgets I find useful are battery widgets to keep track of battery life across my devices and a calendar widget to keep track of what exams and important events I have coming up. I also have this music widget to cycle through my local music files. You can download custom widgets from the App Store and Play Store as well. Apps like KWGT on Android let you go completely crazy with widgets. iOS and some Samsung devices also let you use different lock screen clock styles and add some extra widgets. Hopefully this should get your home screen set up and ready to go. This is just an example of what you can do with your home screens, but if you want to go crazy and customize your home screen as much as possible, I have already laid out the groundwork for that, so more power to you. I ended up completely resetting my home screen layouts for this video, so if you like what you are seeing, do be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you are an Android user, stick around as I have even more options for you.
there is a good chance that your keyboard is Google's Gboard. In the Gboard settings, you can create a custom theme. So for example, I can add this photo here and make that the wallpaper to my keyboard. You can also use a custom color or apply a gradient to your liking. The next two options will require a bit of tampering, so do this at your own risk. If you own an Android 12 device or higher, you have the ability to change the theme of your device thanks to Google's dynamic theming engine called Material U. Though this is cool, sometimes the color options provided by the system are quite limited. So you can use an app called Repainter or a free app called Color Blender to go wild on the device colors. To set these apps up, you will need to install an app called Shizuku, and with developer mode enabled, you want to pair the app with wireless debugging in the developer mode options. Once you do that, you can change the colors of your device to your heart's content. While we're at it, you can also get this app called System UI Tuner to tweak system animations. I find the default animation times to be quite slow, but through developer options, I also find the 05 times animation speed to be too fast. This is where this app comes in, as after setup, you can create a custom animation speed. I like to set it to 0.65, where it's perfectly fast enough for me, but also doesn't compromise too much on jittery animations. For you Samsung folks out there, this is your moment to shine. On your lock screen, you can set either a live video wallpaper, or a series of wallpapers to cycle through every time you press the power button. You cannot talk about Samsung customization without talking about GoodLock, which you can download from the Galaxy Store. You can go absolutely crazy with this app. For example, if you use gesture navigation on your device, you can customize the length of the bar and make that bar a different color. If you use buttons, you can change the buttons to be whatever you want. I really like the custom buttons, but I also like gesture navigation, so I use an app called One Hand Operation Plus, where I can create a custom navigation gesture without losing the buttons. So for example, instead of swiping from the bottom to go home, I can swipe from the side diagonally. And if I want to access my recent apps, I can swipe up and hold diagonally. There are too many options that you can change here, so feel free to check this out if you have the chance. You should also check out Sound Assistant, where you can theme your own sound panel and add extra steps to your volume slider. If you have a Samsung device that supports the S Pen, you can also go crazy with the pen styles with Pentastic. For example, you can change the pen cursor design, and you can even add custom sounds for when you take out or charge the pen. Unrelated, but all S Pen enabled Samsung devices use Wacom's Drawing Digitizer, so you can grab any Wacom tablet compatible pen like this Doors Digital Jumbo, or any other pen that you find comfortable using. If you have a Samsung phone, you can also use this Good Luck plugin called Wonderland, where you can create your own live wallpaper. There are honestly way too many settings to customize, and if I went any longer, it will probably take me 3 hours to get through everything. So with that said, here are my final customizations. I honestly think Apple's customization implementation still needs a bit of work, but for what it's worth, I can mostly recreate my Samsung's home screen, and that alone is probably enough for the most part. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, do leave a like and subscribe. Which customization feature do you think is the coolest? Do share in the comments below. Until next time.